Welcome to the Leading Movement Health Series. I'm your host, Phil Wagner, founder and CEO of Sparta Science. Today's guest, I am so excited. We have the retired U- U.S. Army General Michael Garrett, who was the commanding general of Forces Command. And General Garrett began in the infantry after ROTC, and he's commanded at every level and was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, but we don't have enough time to list all the other medals. It's a long list. And why I'm so excited is leadership is generally most challenged at speed and at scale. And so it's hard to find leaders that have the experience that General Garrick does on the edge of both of these, because Forces Command is the largest U.S. Army command. There's 750,000 active reservists and National Guard. And the speed aspect to this is they're both being trained and prepared to be combat ready globally. So I want to welcome General Garrett. Thanks for joining us. Bill, thanks for having me. And I hope those dings didn't make it to the to your recording. If they did, I'm sorry. And I apologize to all the folks that are listening out there. This is a, you know, a person who has been humbled over the last nine months since I retired. You know, I thought I was a pretty low maintenance general. Uh, what I found is that there's no such thing. And <laughs> that um, you know, I uh, I appreciated and said thank you often uh, to the folks that I worked with, uh, but today I miss them probably a lot more than they miss me. Um, but Phil, it is it is nice to be with you today and and uh, to talk about you know my experiences and you know what I've learned uh, over a forty year career if you count and I basically count the two years of ROTC. Uh, but, you know, 40 years uh, in the Army, uh, culminating uh, with what I thought was one of my favorite jobs, uh, and that is as a commander, United States Army Forces Command. Yeah, no, didn't didn't pick up on those dings. So you're, you're all good. I think, all right. uh, yeah, yeah. Big part of being being out of the services. Yeah. And in the private realm is just, yeah, there's a lot more unexpectedness, uh, things outside your control. And certainly people you may not have to help, which is always uh, part of the fun. But, you know, I think you, you've had this 40-year career and, and have gotten to see all these different commands, locations. You know, why is health so important to organizations, in particular the U.S. Army? So from the very, very beginning, and I don't know if it was, it was probably my father, Command Sergeant Major Ed Garrett. But he said to me that, you know, son, there's only one way to lead uh, in the Army, and it's you know, from the front of your unit, and it's by personal example. And so I've been, so think about this, I've been, you know, every single day, you know, that is uh, how I have approached leadership. And it was easy when I was Second Lieutenant Garrett, platoon leader of a mechanized infantry platoon in the 24th Infantry Division, with about 30, 35 soldiers, you know, four armored personnel carriers, um, you know, I knew where the front of the organization was. Um, I had a really good sense of what leading by example meant. And it meant, I think, in its most basic form, being present. But it also meant being an example of the standards that we talked about, wrote about, and expected of our soldiers. And so it was being fit. It was, again, being present. It was genuinely caring for and knowing, you know, your soldiers, their families. And again, you know, that was very easy to do with 30 people. I knew every single one of them. Uh, You know, I was counseled on a couple of occasions by my senior non-commissioned officer. He said, Mike, or he didn't call me Mike, but he goes, sir, I think you're too close to specialist so-and-so. Well, the reason me and specialist so-and-so were close is because we were close in age. We shared a lot of, um, you know, we had a lot in common and and I probably was, Uh, but I knew every single member of that platoon. Um, And, you know, as a company commander, uh, so now I'm a captain and I'm commanding my first company in Korea, Uh, a little bit bigger challenge. There's 240 of them now. And it uh, took a little bit more effort, uh, but the leading by example, uh, you know, from the front of the formation um, and being that example uh, is what I strove for every day. And uh, I think I started to figure it out. Well, 
to make a long story, and it is long, when I was a battalion commander in the 82nd Airborne Division, I think there were probably 750 paratroopers in the in the battalion. My brigade commander, my boss, is in, in one of our counseling sessions. He said, Mike, he goes, when you get to be a brigade commander, you're not going to be able to command like you're commanding your battalion. I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, you know, every single one of your paratroopers. And I said to myself, hmm, he thinks I know every single one of my paratroopers. But you know what? So did they. And, and, and it's because, uh, again, you know, leading from the front, leading by example. And what I learned over the years is that every single person counts and every single personal interaction counts. And so I never walked past anybody. Um, you know, I always said hello. And sometimes that hello uh, was more than just a cursory hello as I'm walking by, it turned into a conversation. And what I learned is that, you know, five minutes of my time with one of my soldiers, uh, you know, I might forget, you know, Specialist Garrett's name. I may even have forgotten the actual encounter. But you know what? He never did. Mm. Um, and so uh, I've always carried that with me. I mean, I know that, you know, as a brigade commander with almost 4,000 paratroopers, and then as you, um, you know, talked about my last job, 750,000 folks, um, you know, there's no way that you can know each and every individual, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. And and what I did is I tried to know all of them. And And what I did over time is I learned different ways to be present, you know, as the forces command commander, um, you know, depending on what I was doing that day, that was the front of the formation. You know, sometimes it was in Minnesota, you know, with the National Guard Division, or sometimes it was at the National Training Center with one of our armored brigade combat teams. Sometimes it was at the Pentagon, you know, representing forces command to the secretary of the army and the chief of staff of the army. Uh, but being, um, you know, mindful of the fact that, uh, you know, you're leading from the front of your organization, looking for ways to interact with as many individuals uh, as possible, uh, and then being, um, you know, a good example for all of those things that you talk about uh, being important. Hmm. Uh, you know, one of the other things that I've always said, and, and again, this is something my dad or, you know, some very wise soldier, officer, non-commissioned officer, uh, you know, you only get one chance to make a first impression. Uh, and, and, you know, that's also something that I, I think a lot about. The other thing is, you know, people, soldiers especially, you know, they'll read whatever you write. I mean, if you make them. Um, but what they really want is they want to see you uh, and they want to be able to um, – assess you against all of the things that you talk about, all of the things that you write about. What they're looking at is, 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 is General Garrett, you know, is he genuine in all of these things or is he just writing another policy letter? Um, and so for me, you know, it was one of those things that, again, I thought about every day and, and I've, I've, there, there've been a couple of, of euphemisms or analogies, you know, that I've used over the years. And some of them are more than just analogies. I mean, you know, I talk about not walking past trash and what I really mean there is, and I really don't, I don't walk past trash. Um, right. you know, I've gotten smarter about it over the years, uh, but I don't walk past it, but I don't walk past anything that I see is wrong. Mm. Um, and, and that's the other thing that I tell uh, folks. So anyway, I, this was a long winded answer to your question, but it goes back to leading by example um, and it goes back to, you know, I think trying to know everyone uh, in your, your organization. Yeah. And I think particularly the scale you had that leading by example becomes even more important because they're not in those 30 person commands where you know everybody and, and therefore that leading by example in a way allows you to scale, you know, to communicate your style to everybody. I, w I wanted to kind of dig deeper on that. Don't walk past trash because it's a great euphemism. You know, and people would think, oh, it's very concrete. You know, if there's litter on the ground, pick it up. But I think you mean something bigger when you when you say don't walk past trash. Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, this year I got to I was the commencement speaker for my university, Xavier University there in Cincinnati. And um, it really was a huge deal for me personally, because, as yeah, I was not a 
I wasn't a horrible college student. I mean, I graduated, but I wasn't a great college student. And, you know, I had a lot of fun in college and, you know, uh, I was sharing one of my college. um, And this is still I don't have this dream as often anymore. And I I should wonder why. But, you know, up until I left the Army, I still had those dreams about that class and that last test that I had to take. And I can't find the class. um, And now, you know, I'm at risk of not graduating from college. But anyways, um, you know, my speech, uh, which was nine minutes long. And, and that's because, you know, when I thought about my graduation, anything longer, <laughs> than 10 minutes, anything longer than 10 minutes was too long. Agree. Yeah. And then I wanted it to be simple, uh, and prophetic, you know, at the same time. And, and, um, and, and I wanted it to, to be genuine and, you know, so, not walking past trash, uh, you know, for me has been important uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it is bigger than than just litter on the ground, um, although I think that's important. Uh, but it's also uh, not walking past things that you know are wrong uh, without addressing them, um, you know, which is a, a challenge, which has always been a challenge, not just for this generation. Um, I mean, I think people in general um, would rather not be confrontational. Mm. Um, and so it does, it, it does mean more than just, uh, picking up trash. Yeah. And I think, you know, correct if I'm wrong here, but that's where having almost a, a good leadership team around you, because you couldn't possibly by yourself address every, you know, situation that isn't going right, you know, so you've also got to be able to handle some of those yourself, but also delegate accordingly. Well, I think it goes back to what we said before, you know, as, so as a battalion commander, um, I had a way to communicate uh, effectively with the 750 paratroopers that I had, you know, when there were 4,000 of them or almost 4,000 of them, you know, I had to be a little bit more imaginative. Uh, but over the years, I've learned a number of different uh, ways to communicate. Um, you know, and the Army's good, you know, there's a chain of command. Um, and so there are leaders, you know, that I communicated with and provided, you know, my thoughts and guidance to them. And they would in turn provide it to their subordinate leaders, uh, you know, so that was effective. Um, but again, there's no um, there's no real substitute for personal presence. And I don't care if you're the force com commander or, you know, second lieutenant Garrett with 30 people, you know, your soldiers and subordinates deserve to hear from their boss. Um, you just have to be creative in terms of how you communicate with them. You know, for me, uh, physical fitness has always been important. Uh, you know, it was important when I was a young officer and, you know, uh, I, I'm not sure what my reputation, my complete reputation in the army is. Uh, but I think one of the pieces of feedback that I often get is, you know, uh, that I demanded, you know, fit units. And even as the force comm commander, you know, I talked about the importance of, you know, leading by example, the importance of leaders being fit uh, and being that example, you know, for the people that they, the men and women that they led. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. And I think in the spirit of brevity, you know, with your commencement speech, you know, that's also how I look at um, these podcasts is, you know, how can we, you know, really boil it down to what's the most, you know, impactful for people? And as I listen to you, I always like to sum up kind of three take homes. And one, which you just hit on, is leading by example. How important that is when it comes to, especially health. You know, being fit. If you're asking others to be fit, is so important, particularly at scale. The second thing, which which is really kind of impactful for me, is that every personal interaction counts. And it means so much more to the people you're leading in some cases than to you, but you need to recognize that every personal interaction counts. And the last one, which is, which is a great euphemism is don't walk past trash. You know, certainly can be something concrete, you know, like litter on the ground, but more often it's problems that if you don't address them, you know, grow to something much bigger. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 something as simple as, you know, when you walk in the office and your executive assistant is uh, and you know this not having a great day, you know, um, regardless of how busy you are. And, and like most uh, senior you know leaders, uh, every second of my day was accounted for. Right. 
uh, actually more seconds of the day were accounted for and we had to figure it out. But you know what? Um, you know, I can remember taking the time to have, you know, have her come into the office, sit down and ask her, Hey, what's going on? What's wrong? You know, um, and, um, and, and not just for my executive assistant, you know, that I had uh, a personal relationship with, I mean, you know, she'd been with me for three years, but I would do the same thing with anybody, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I'd walk by a soldier and I'd say hello and, you know, they would salute and say hello, but, you know, depending on how they said it, I'd ask them, I'd say, what's going on? What's wrong? Yeah. And, and, and it's amazing, you know, the feedback, you know, that you get from people and, um, you know, I guess the, you know, the last little story and I have a number of them, but this one, <laughs> um, and this is after I'd retired, I got, an, I got a text message from the spouse of a soldier who had just died. And, and I'm not sure, uh, you know, what the autopsy determined. Um, I personally listened to it, thought that he committed suicide or died by suicide. Uh, but I'm not sure, you know, how this how this all played out. But this spouse sends me a note and she goes, hey, look, you don't know me. Um, my husband is staff sergeant, uh, whatever, you know, staff sergeant uh, so and so. And um, he is he died uh, last week and, and I'm having challenges with the chain of command and, you know, uh, getting information and those kinds of things. And, you know, the one thing that I've learned is that. um you know, you're never, ever going to be able to answer all of the questions of a grieving uh, spouse, parent. Mm. Uh, and all you can do is listen and try and be helpful. Um, but, you know, what was interesting about her was she goes, look, she goes, you don't know me and you probably don't remember my husband. But, you know, he certainly remembers you. You know, he was in your unit when you were the brigade commander in Alaska. Uh, he remembers, you know, several personal interactions with you. And when you took over Force Com, this guy happened to be at Fort Bragg. He came home that night and told me that his old brigade commander was now, you know, the four star commanding general of forces command. Hmm. Um, And 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 based on, you know, what her husband and how her husband described me, she felt comfortable reaching out to to me asking, you know, for help. Hmm. Uh, And and again, I think, you know, I think those uh, it just goes back to my earlier point about how every single interaction matters. You know, it matters in many cases, not that it doesn't matter to me, uh, but it matters, um, you know, so much more, you know, to the individual. Um, And um, so anyways, that was just something that, you know, again, meant a whole lot to me. And, Mm. um, um, you know, my favorite thing about being a general is helping people. And, you know, and I was certainly glad that I could provide her some assistance. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing. And certainly that reverberations, right, of that personal interaction was was certainly felt. Yeah. 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 Well, General Garrett, thank you for your time today. And I know you're a busy man, so appreciate you joining us.